provide you with the lowest per GB rates, night or day. SLT 4G, driving you ever forward. Making headlines on first at nine. No definitive decision. The Supreme Court issues an interim order temporarily suspending the President's proclamation to dissolve Parliament. No hindrances to convene. The MP leader Ranil Vikramasinghe ready to show the majority in Parliament. We will show the majority that we are the legitimate government of Sri Lanka. Change of guard. Calls for Sajid Premadasa to be made UMP's party leader intensify with the deputy leader saying that he is ready. Focus on the match. Spinner Akhil Dhananjaya called to the squad to play against the second test against England despite being reported for a suspect blowing action. Where were the human rights? Israeli airstrikes pound the Gaza Strip in the deadliest attack since 2014. A very good evening and welcome to Adha Darana 24-7 First at 9. I'm Katrina Chang. Now moving on to your top story tonight. The Supreme Court today delivered its much-anticipated verdict over the fundamental rights petitions which were filed challenging the President's proclamation to dissolve the Parliament. The Supreme Court issued a stay order temporarily suspending the Gazette notification issued by the President until the 7th of December. The highest court in the country also issued a stay order on the Elections Commission preventing a general election. Thirteen fundamental rights petitions were submitted to the Supreme Court yesterday seeking a verdict which deemed the dissolution of Parliament illegal. Today, the petitions were deliberated by the three-member Supreme Court judge bench consisting of Chief Justice Nalin Pereira, Justice Priyanta Jawardhana and Justice Prasanna Jawardhana. Security was tightened in and around the Supreme Court premises today with extra units of police and police special task force being deployed. Before the petitions were taken up, Attorney General Jayanta Surya requested the Supreme Court to dismiss all petitions filed in relation to the dissolution of Parliament as the President's decision is in fact in line with the 19th Amendment of the Constitution of Sri Lanka. The Attorney General referred to Article 33.2c in the 19th Amendment of the Constitution which states, quote, in addition to the powers, duties and functions expressly conferred or imposed on or assigned to the President by the Constitution or other written law, the President shall have the power to summon, prorogue and dissolve Parliament, unquote. The Attorney General also argued that as per the sub-Article 1 of the Article 70 of the Constitution, Parliament does not have the power to dissolve itself through a two-third majority vote at a time when it's being prorogued. Jayasudya said that the power instead lies with the President in accordance with sub-article 2 of the Article 33 of the Constitution. After one and a half hours of arguments before the judge bench, Attorney General went on to emphasise that nobody holds the power to take away public's right to cast their vote in an election. Meanwhile, intermediary petitions challenging the 13 petitions against dissolution of the Parliament were also deliberated at the Supreme Court today. Professor G.L. Piris, who represented the Sri Lanka Podujana Perumuna, Dr. Channa Jayasumana, Professor Thissavitarana, Parliamentarian Zudaya Gaman Pillai and Vasudevanane Akara, as well as Attorney at Law Premanatsi Dolavatta, submitted the relevant intermediary petitions. Attorneys representing these petitioners argued that the proclamation by the President to dissolve the Parliament is constitutional. The Supreme Court concluded deliberations of all petitions by 3.30 in the afternoon and gave its verdict at around 6 in the evening. Reading out the verdict, Chief Justice Nalin Pereira said that the Supreme Court issued a stay order temporarily suspending the Gazette notification issued by the President on the dissolution of Parliament until the 7th of December. Supreme Court also said that cases related to the petitions will be taken up on the 4th, 5th and 6th of December. Following the verdict, parliamentarians who were gathered at the Supreme Court premises expressed their views to media. We are happy that the Supreme Court upheld democracy for the sake of our children. With the election being stopped, we again received the public's mandate.
I ask all Sri Lankans to celebrate this historic verdict in a constitutional and peaceful manner. All election processes have been suspended. The case will be taken up in court on the 4th, 5th and 6th of December. There is no obstacle to convene the parliament anymore. This was not a personal achievement or one that was ensured by the UNP. We have the people's mandate. We will decide on a prime minister and the cabinet as per the powers we have in parliament. Had they presented a no-confidence motion against Ranil Vikram Singh, we would have supported it. But they try to go on a political journey in an undemocratic manner, and these are the consequences Prime Minister Mahindra Rajpaksha and President Maitri Pala Sirisena had to face. The parliament has been convened and we're going to the parliament tomorrow. If someone says that this Gazette notification has been nullified, it is a highly erroneous statement. We will file objections on the 19th of November and count objections on the 26th. We will compile written discourses on the 30th. The case will accordingly be taken up in court on the 4th, 5th and 6th of December. I think this was a good verdict, considering 45 days isn't enough time to get ready for an election. I believe this gives us time to get the two-thirds majority and prepare for election. We will establish a government of our own. <laughs>above the law and it's a victory for decent politics in this country. We appreciate the order given by the Supreme Court. Order ensures that the constitution is not trampled upon. You must abide by the constitution. And we are prepared when the court assembles again to give reasons as to why this is an illegal and unconstitutional order. While thanking the Supreme Court, I must also thank Honorable Karu Jayasuri, the Speaker of Parliament, who upheld the dignity of Parliament, the power of Parliament, and the rights of the people. Tomorrow, Parliament is meeting. We will be in Parliament. We will show the majority that we are the legitimate government of Sri Lanka. And we will ensure that is enforced. I would also like to remind the police that the Honorable the Speaker is in charge of the Parliament and the security of the members of Parliament. They must adhere to what the Speaker says. Chief incumbent of the Ganga Ramaya Temple, Venerable Galvarunyani Satera, is of the view that the country's instability is a result of failure by politicians to adhere to religious teachings. Satera aired these views while speaking at an event held in Colombo last evening, where he was also critical of attempts by some to erase the country's past. The Business Today Award ceremony was held in Colombo yesterday to felicitate entrepreneurs of 30 companies that have excelled in business during 2017 and 2018. The event was held under the auspices of President Maitri Pala Sirisena. The keynote address was delivered by Chief Incumbent of Ganga Rame Temple, Venerable Gal Bodak Yani Sirathera. Lord Buddha says that one should live a bountiful life without getting into debt. Our country, however, is in debt. While various people talk about debt, some people continue to waste. When there is an issue, we continue to head towards destruction because we forget what Buddhism, Christianity, Hindu and Islam religious leaders say. Some try to erase the past and have proposed not to teach history to children. But Europe, who took this path, are now changing their way of thinking. People in Japan, who never used to lock their houses at night, are now doing so because they did not follow such a school of thought. 
We know how China used to be. We must be happy about how far they have come. If people of this country want a good night's sleep, then work in a manner that does not compel you to leave the country. Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha assures the commitment of both Sri Lanka Freedom Party and the Sri Lanka Pudujana Perumuna towards working together as an alliance. He expressed these views to media at an event held yesterday. Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha held a meeting last evening with the All Ceylon Jamayatul Ulama last evening. We are want to give you this crucial junction. Following the meeting, the Prime Minister addressed media. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister called on the Chief Prelate of the Sri Lanka Amarapura sect, Chief Incumbent of Sri Lanka Dharma Palarameya in Mount Lavinia, Most Venerable Kutugura Dhammavasa Thera. Mahindra Rajapaksha is someone who does not need any further experience. He has always been able to resolve issues faced in the country. He will be able to forge ahead with President Mahindra Rajapaksha. There will be no shortcomings. I also know that Ranil Vikram Singh is a gentleman. I know that him, together with the United National Party, will extend their support towards the progress of the country when needed. The symbol to be used by the proposed alliance involving the Sri Lanka Freedom Party and the Sri Lanka Pudujana Perumuna was revealed today by parliamentarian WDJ Seniviratna. MP Seniviratna said that the alliance will use the flower bud as their symbol when contesting the general election. His views, however, came before the Supreme Court issued an interim order suspending the Gazette notification on the dissolution of parliament. <laughs> SLFP and SLP will go for the election together. Therefore, the two parties will go for election as one broad front. The flower bud will be the symbol of the party and it will have a name like Sri Lanka Freedom Podijana Peramuna. This was decided last night and it's not publicized yet. There are suggestions to make the president the leader and the prime minister the chairman of the front and a secretary is yet to be nominated. We strongly believe he will contest from the Kurunagala district. He is a leader who faces elections. We hope he will win with a huge majority. We have a clear victory. The UNP is broken to pieces. The symbol of this broad alliance will not be any existing one. A new symbol and a new name will be created for it. This is the strength of this alliance. What is important is the decision taken by the President and the Prime Minister. Mahindra Rajpaksha knows this country very well and remains with the people. His good decision making as Prime Minister will contribute towards the win in election. Deputy Leader of the United National Party, Sajid Premadasa, today expressed his readiness to accept any responsibility vested on him by the party and the working committee. The parliamentarian was responding to a question raised by the BBC Singular Service on the prospect of him accepting the prime ministerial candidacy. United National Party parliamentarian Ashok Abe Singh called on the chief prelate of Malwata chapter today. Speaking to media afterwards, MP Abe Singh has said that most of the UMPers prefer to nominate Sajid Premadasa as a candidate for the premiership. Our followers were beginning to drift away from the party. 64 leading followers of the party left recently. Supporters need him to be the premier. Out of the 100 in the United National Front, around 90 are of this stance. 
In the meantime, several other parliamentarians expressed views on the leadership of the United National Party and the Prime Ministerial candidacy. There is no issue with the leadership of the party. However, supporters request Sajid Premadas to be made the candidate for Prime Minister if we are to go for an election. We look forward to such a change in the leadership. There are calls to make Sajid Premadasa the premiership candidate. I have no doubt that our leader will pay his attention to this matter. I request him to face this challenge this time around. Meanwhile, BBC Singhala Service questioned MP Sajid Premadasa on the suggestion of him being made the premiership candidate. I am ready for anything from the day I got the membership of the party, but there's a method to do all that. I have done all I can in all the elections so far. I'm bound to fulfill the responsibilities under the blessings of the leader, parliamentarians and the supporters. Leader of the Janata Vimukti Peramuna Anura Kumara Disanayaka highlights the party's aversion to corruption as the reason the party sought the assistance of court against the president's decision to dissolve the parliament. The parliamentarian made the remark while addressing the 29th Remembrance of November Heroes or Il Mahaviru Samarua today. <laughs> Without checking if the government has the true power in parliament, they dissolved it. When the JVP and some other parties go to court, they claim it is because we are scared of elections. We are not scared of elections, but we are against corruption. This is a breach of the constitution. Mahinda, Ranil or Maitripala has no right over democracy ever again. Ranil Lukram Singh is trying to be the fake guardian of democracy. We shouldn't allow him to use democracy to cover up the corrupted rule of Ranil Vikramasinghe, which spans for three years. Can Mahindra Rajapaksha or Ranil Vikramasinghe establish wholesome politics? When Ranil Vikramasinghe got a public mandate against corruption, he kept up corruption, disregarding the mandate. Therefore, the people of this country must understand that the UNP cannot establish wholesome politics in the country. Meanwhile, the National Freedom Front alleges that the JVP, which fully committed in their efforts to make Rani Vikramasinghe the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka, has allocated just a single day to commemorate its fallen comrades in the arms on the month of November. Its media spokesperson, Muhammad Muzamil, made this remark while addressing a media briefing held in Colombo today. The current opposition is afraid to go before the people in villages. They are seeking relief from the judiciary. They are afraid of facing an election. Our JVP friends who were in the government held a rally called Ranil Sulanga in Nugegoda recently. JVP also undertook the mission to bring Ranil Vikramasinghe back as Prime Minister. Over the last 364 days, they were in the UNP's Sirikota and they came out to commemorate their comrades who made sacrifices for them only today. Once Ranil Vikram Singh saved his name by forwarding Sarat Fonseca for elections. Same thing is happening now. He keeps the party leadership with him and uses Sajid only for the election. At the same time, he works towards the defeat of Sajid. The only intention of Ranil Vikram Singh is to end the political career of Sajid at the end of this election. Former Foreign Secretary Dr. Pal Tekohona suggests that it would be better if Western countries warm to the new administration of Sri Lanka and attempt to work with it in a constructive manner rather than negative exchanges. Addressing a media briefing organized by the movement earlier, he further stated that Sri Lanka will work in a proactive and friendly manner with the West. The country was in a mess. The economy was had reached a point which it had never reached, even during the worst days of the terrorist-inspired conflict. The stock market was following a downward spiral in an unstoppable manner. Of course, not to talk about the currency. The currency reached a point that, from which it might be very difficult for it to recover. So I think as a reasonable person, President, 
took this measure. Things were terrible in the country. I also suspect that when things happened on the 26th of October, many Western countries and their embassies in Colombo, high commissions in Colombo, were wrong-footed. They did not expect this change to happen. They were living in a world of their own where the former prime minister, Mr. Vikramasinghe, would continue in office, whatever happened to the country. And they had enough time to deal with the emergence of the Rajapaksas between now and the elections which should have been held in uh, late 2020. So they were banking on the fact that there was time to prepare for that in whatever form, and they were suddenly caught off guard when the president intervened and appointed uh, Mr. Mahindra Rajapaksa as the new uh, prime minister. The way they have reacted is sudden, and this may explain the gaps in their logic, the gaps in their reasoning, and the gaps in their justification. I would suggest that under the circumstances, it would be better for these Western countries to try and work with the new dispensation to deal with the new administration in a constructive manner rather than in a negative manner. Sri Lanka is, will work in a proactive, in a friendly manner with the West. Sri Lanka will continue to deal with the West as if they are our friends. And they are our friends. You are watching Sri Lanka's award-winning news channel, Other Verena 24-7. Welcome back to the news. Kapila Chandrasen has been appointed as the new chairperson of Sri Lankan Airlines. Chandrasen previously served as the CEO of Sri Lankan Airlines. The meantime chairman of the Sri Lankan Airlines, Ranjit Fernando, and one of its directors, Mano Tittavala, resigned from their post earlier today. The central bank announced that in terms of the provisions of the Financial Transactions Reporting Act No. 6 of 2006, the Financial Intelligence Unit of Sri Lanka entered into a memorandum of understanding with the Department of Motor Traffic recently. According to a communique released by the CBSL, the MOU enables the CBSL to receive intelligence information related to investigations and prosecutions of money laundering, terrorist financing and other related crimes. Commissioner General of the Department of Motor Traffic, A.H.K. Jaga Chandrasini, and Director of the FIU, D.M. Rupa Singha, signed the MOU on behalf of the respective institutions in the presence of the Governor of CBSL, Dr. Indrajit Kumaraswamy, who is also the Chairman of the Anti-Money Laundering, co-countering the financing of Terrorism National Coordinating Committee. The All Share Price Index ended in green today at 5,993.54, which is an increase of 0.21%. The market turnover crossing for today was 6.6 .6 billion rupees, with subdued levels of foreign participation in the market activity. With that, we have Dimata Matthew from First Capital Holdings for a detailed report. The market ended on a positive note for the third consecutive day, mainly on the gains made by Hatton National Bank and John Kills Holdings. Uh, the benchmark index ASPI was on a volatile path, trending down during the first half of the day, but reverse trend and uh, started trending upwards, uh, reaching an intraday high to touch the psychological barrier of 6,000 prior to closing at 5,994 points, gaining uh, 13 points for the day. Uh, the turnover recorded a 17-month high today, led by the crossings in Odell. The net, for, uh, net foreign inflow was recorded uh, during the day, but there was low foreign participation. The Sri Lankan rupee fell to a record low today, hitting 176 rupees and 5 cents against the dollar, surpassing its previous all-time low of 175 rupees and 90 cents hit yesterday. With that, let's take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee traded against other currencies around the world.
At least five Palestinians were killed by Israeli air attacks on the Gaza Strip and an Israeli civilian died in a barrage of rocket fire in the worst violence between the two sides since 2014 war. The latest escalation came less than 24 hours after at least seven Palestinians were killed in a covert Israeli operation in the besieged enclave. Palestinians awoke to sites of destruction today when Israeli airstrikes after Palestinian militants carried out their most intensive shelling of Israel since the 2014 Gaza war in retaliation for a botched cross-border commando raid. The covert Israeli mission got exposed in Gaza on Sunday where seven Palestinian militants, including a Hamas military commander, were killed during the incident along with a member of the Israeli undercover unit. After a brief lull following Sunday night's violence, a barrage of rockets was launched towards Israeli later in the day yesterday. Overnight rockets hit border communities including the city of Eshkelon, several miles north of Gaza, killing a civilian and seriously wounding another. Israel retaliated with waves of airstrikes against Hamas and the smaller Palestinian Islamic Jihad faction across the Gaza Strip. Israeli military said more than 100 military targets were hit, including a unique vessel belonging to Hamas in a harbour in southern Gaza. Israeli warned it is prepared to dial up its response to Hamas, while Hamas's military wing said it was ready to expand the circle of fire against Israel. You are watching Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Other Than 24-7. Former Sri Lankan international Dilhar Lukuhetege has been charged with the three counts of breaching the Emirates Cricket Board's anti-corruption code. The International Cricket Council has charged the former Sri Lankan player on behalf of the Emirates Cricket Board. The charges relate to the T10 Cricket League played in the UAE last year. The charges against Lukuhetege are being party to an effort to fix or contrive a domestic match, directly soliciting, inducing, enticing or encouraging a player to breach Code Article 211 and failure to disclose to the designated anti-corruption officer full details of any approaches or invitations he received to engage in corrupt conduct under the Code. Lokhetege has been given 14 days from today to respond to the charges. Taking wet with the forecast for the next 24 hours now, some wet weather is forecast for the regions of Central, Sabdagavu and Western Provinces and in Gaul and Mathura districts. Fair weather, however, will prevail elsewhere. Meanwhile, fairly strong winds of up to 40 to 50 km per hour can be expected over the island, particularly in northern, eastern, north central, central and southern provinces. Misty conditions may occur at some places in the central, Sabragama and western provinces during the morning. Let's now take a look at your city by city forecast. And that's all we have from First at Night to for tonight. But before we go, we'd like to pay a tribute to an iconic figure who bid his farewell to the world today. Stan Lee, the legendary writer, editor and publisher of Marvel Comics, whose iconic but flawed creations made him a real-life superhero to comic book lovers everywhere, passed away in Cedar Sinai Medical Center in California at the age of 95. Lee was the creator of some of a comic's most enduring characters such as the Fantastic Four, Spider-Man, the Incredible Hulk and X-Men. Born on the 28th of December in 1922, to poor working-class Jewish immigrants from Romania, Stanley Martin Lieber got a job in timely publications that would eventually become Marvel Comics. He was assigned to the comics division and thanks to the reach of his imagination, rose to editor by the age of 18. So embarrassed was Lieber by much of what he was writing at the time that he refused to put his real name on the byline and assumed the name Stan Lee, which he later legally adopted. After a rival comic had come up with a super team consisting of Batman, Superman and Wonder Woman, Timely needed to respond. 
Lee's answer in 1961 was a fantastic four which changed Lee's life and the comic industry forever. Soon after, with a bite from a spider, nerdy Peter Parker was transformed into an icon of modern popular culture, the Spider-Man. In collaboration with several artists, particularly Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko, he went on to co-create more fictional characters such as the Avengers, the Hulk, Doctor Strange, Daredevil, the X-Men, Ant-Man, Iron Man, Thor and Black Panther. Almost all his characters grappled with problems like drug abuse, bigotry and social inequality. Other superheroes broke new ground in other ways. Daredevil was blind, Black Panther was black and Silver Surfer pondered the state of humanity. Stan Lee is also remembered for one simple word, Excelsior. It was his catchphrase and clever sign-off which quickly became an optimistic mantra for the writer. He was renowned for his relentless imagination, pioneering spirit and heroic work ethic. Well, you can just imagine if you've spent your life working on something and you find out that the fans love what you have done and can't wait to meet you at a convention to tell you how pleased they are. I can't even describe how wonderful that feels and how grateful that makes me feel. Bringing you the news and information 24 hours a day. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel. Other than 24-7.